Hi there, I just wanted to pop in today to share with you how I make my chai because interestingly, I've had a few people write in to me and say, what do you put into your chai? Now, why, so first of all, why do I make chai? The way I make it, it is like what I call a palava. It's a whole thing. It's, it's the complete opposite of how life has, is being lived right now. You know, it's like when people go grab a cup of tea or a coffee or something, they take it to go in a disposable paper cup and they drive through and they pick it up and, and blah, blah, blah. Whereas, um, whereas for me, making a cup of chai or a cup of tea is more like a ceremony. I call it a palava. It's like a ordeal because it slows you down. And I think that's so important for an empath. It's a tip I have for you if you are an empath. So as I make my chai, I'm going to show you what an ordeal it is, but also I'm going to tell you that, that one of the tips I have if you are an empath, especially if you're feeling overwhelmed by life, by the media, by social media, by everything that's happening, slow down, just slow down. I love slowing down. I love cooking and when I cook, even my cooking is a palava. I like to have lots of ingredients and I make up my recipes as I go and I add things just because I feel like adding them. So for me, even cooking is like just something that I do slowly and ceremoniously and it charges my battery. And so if you think you're an empath, do things that charge your battery. Moving fast doesn't charge my battery. It, it, it actually discharges me. So back to the cup of chai. Um, I have some water boiling in the kitchen. I have some milk being steamed, but I have put out all the ingredients I need over here. So I'm just gonna go grab the water and the milk. And you can use um, any kind of milk, like whether it's dairy or whether it's non-dairy or oat milk or macadamia nut milk, whatever kind of milk is your preference, any kind of milk works. But I'll show you some of the key ingredients that I use. So, um, the first thing that's super important is that you need a tea bag or a couple of tea bags that's really strong black tea. So I use a brand called PG Tip because. They're really strong. They're not, uh, yeah, they're, they're, it's very English. You can use Indian tea, Ceylon tea, English tea, but not the kind of tea that you use for iced tea. So it has to be a strong black tea. Then I add water so that it starts to seep. It has to seep for a while. But here's the other secret ingredient I add, cardamoms. So I, I open these cardamom pods so that the flavor seeps in, it seeps into the tea. But another little magical thing I add, which I purchase and I just do this, this is a blue lotus chai, it's a powder. And this powder has a lot of little, a lot of ingredients mixed in, uh, masala, it's an, um, and it's got this tiny little bamboo spoon inside. And I, and you don't have to do this, uh, this powder, it's, it's optional, but I just do to give it this added flavor, just this little spoon of blue lotus chai. I get the one that's not caffeinated because I'm already putting the black tea in, which has caffeine. And then I just let that steep for a while. And, and Usually, when I'm doing it, when I'm taking more time, I even cover it with this tea cozy. And this keeps it warm while it's steeping. And usually while this is steeping, I go and steam some milk, which I've already pre-done over here. But um, if you don't have a steamer, you can actually get, um, what I do is when I'm using bigger mugs and not dainty little cups like this, what I do is I have a hand frother. So this is a milk frother actually. So I have a frother where you can just, it, and it just costs a couple of bucks from Ikea literally. And it froths the milk in the cup itself. And then when you pour the tea, 
the, the foam just rises up. So that's what I always used to use before. But I can't use that frother in these tiny little dainty cups, and so that's why I'm using this frother. Um, so you can see what I mean about it being a real ordeal or a real palava, but I love it when things are a palava. I'd love to hear your feedback also, how you feel, um, how it feels being an empath. And if you have a moment, um, hop on to my website to take the empath quiz to see if you are one. Because some of the traits that empaths have is that you can feel the energy when you enter a room. So you feel the energy of the people around you and it can either lift you up, which is great, or it can bring you down depending on the energy in the room. Um, another trait that empaths seem to have is that we're super sensitive to criticism. Empaths really take that to heart. Um, another trait empaths seem to have is many empaths have difficulty saying no even when every fiber of your being wants to say no to something, but somebody really wants you to do it, um, empaths tend to give in to the emotions or the needs or the desires of other people because they feel what other people are feeling. So if you suspect you're an empath, please take the quiz on my website. I'll, I'll include a link below. I'll include a link uh, with this video so that you can jump on and take the quiz. Okay, so I think our, our tea has probably frothed in, uh, has probably steeped enough for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour them into these little cups. And I'm going to leave some room for the milk and the froth. And I'm going to try this two ways so that you can see the difference. We're going to do one way is to put the milk first and one way is to put it after. So this and then we can add the froth on top and the other way is to actually put and remember I said you can use any kind of milk you can use oat milk or any it can be dairy or non-dairy then you can add the tea and watch the froth come to the top. And sometimes I add a dash of cinnamon. Let's see. Now I've got Abby here behind the scenes and my friend Erica. And let's see if Danny is willing to join us for a cup of tea. And we've even got a puppy here, Yoda. And And if anyone wants, wants it a little bit sweet, what I like to do is I like to add raw honey with turmeric. So this honey has turmeric added to it. So that gives it that extra chai flavor with the turmeric. So you see for me, having a cup of tea isn't just grabbing some hot water and a tea bag. It's a whole thing. The whole ceremony. Oh, look who's here. Hi, Boo. Do you want to have some tea? Oh, I thought I smelled some chai. You were right. You uh -huh. smelled correctly. And everybody's already selected, pre-selected which cup is theirs. So, right. So. so you've been allocated with that cup. I see. Okay. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> That's a very good thing. I gave you the nice Now spark. that all comes out in the final tasting. Yes. Apparently, much like cognac, <laughs> the shape of the cup ultimately decides that final little thing, that, that little, pardon me, Gordon Ramsay, but I'm gonna jump in here, like, that little je ne sais quoi that's added to the... Gordon Ramsay doesn't have a French accent, does he? No, he doesn't. <laughs> Wrong person. All right, ooh, all right, yeah. The shape and of the cup in finally decides the bad word, bad word, bad word. That's flavor, Gordon Ramsay. Flavor that's of the Gordon right. Ramsay. Like, so yes. it's the bad word, bad word at the thing. We have to go beep, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> now you got Gordon Ramsay. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so who would like some some honey in their in their tea? I will. Yes. Everybody wants honey. Cool. And I've got these tiny little teaspoons. 
I see. Did they come out of that drawer? Yes, our little secret drawer. You're doing a Facebook Live, right? I am. And there's 17 million people who now know there's a secret drawer with little teaspoons. Yes. <laughs> I don't think it's a secret anymore. No, no more. No, I didn't think and so. And that drawer has all our cute little cups. So we should sit down and have our tea and I'll let each person stir in their honey themselves. Yes, but I don't have time to sit down. Why not? I'm sitting downstairs fixing the little things at the sanctuary. You're editing video and stuff like that. Exactly. That's the thing. Tea is something that you have to do. You have to relax. You have to take a break and sit down and relax. I am sitting down and sitting there working on no, 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 moving no, 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 the no. mouse, getting Here. things working on the sanctuary. This is your cup of tea. <clears throat> and and this is my friend Erica, your cup of tea. Thank you. How exciting. Oh, wow. wow. Hi. And this one with the little feet is Abby's. She chose this one. <laughs> and mine. So so here we go. Let's enjoy our little cups of tea. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and uh, you know, check out my my um, my quiz, my empath quiz, and check out my new book, Sensitive is the New Strong, where I speak about being an empath and how to recharge your batteries and so on and so forth. And I look forward to seeing you really soon on another Facebook Live. Oh, wait, how is it, guys? Amazing, delicious. Does it taste good? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I've just had a sip of this, and this is absolutely bad word, bad word, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs>